the Green Steve. This emerald obsessed being is always on the search for power, and he has been for decades. But his story actually began long ago, back during the Great Illager War. At that time, the villagers were miserably losing against the Illagers. And just as they were about to lose this war, they discovered something, as they discovered how to create clones of their greatest warrior, Steve. And so with thousands of these clones, the balance of power shifted in the villagers' favour. And so very soon, because of these clones, the war had ended, and peace had returned. But with this war over, all these clones very quickly became useless. But luckily, after this war had finished, many villagers decided to keep their steves and give them a new use of hunting down any zombies that entered the villages. But one steve stood out from all of that, as he thought that this was pointless. He was made to kill the most vicious creatures in this world, not hunt weak zombies. And so, because of that, after the war, he decided to leave the village. But he wasn't planning on doing nothing with his life after he left, as he was certain that out there, there must be a creature that was so powerful and so terrifying that it will destroy their civilization given enough time. So he put it on himself that he had to find that creature and kill it first. And so he started to walk and walk through rain, snow and thunder and through the bitter ice spikes and the blistering badlands. And he never stopped as he was certain that that creature did exist and it was hiding in the shadows somewhere, waiting to attack. And so for several decades he kept on going and going and going until eventually he couldn't go any further. As he had reached a massive wall of sorts, he had never seen anything like this before and so he walked up to it to see if he could just pass right through it. But he couldn't. It was a barrier. But there was land and life on this other side, so surely there must be a way to get there. And so he started experimenting with this wall to see if he could find the solution. At first he threw a chunk of wood at it, but that just bounced back. And then he tried to mine it, but he couldn't. And then he tried to dig under it, but he couldn't, as it went underground too. This was all very strange, but he decided that if he wanted to learn more about this other side and how he could get over there, he first needed to know if there was any actual life, such as other animals, on the other side. And so he decided to walk along the edge of this border, constantly on the search. And he did that for several days, but he never saw any other mobs on the other side. But eventually, he found something even stranger. There was a village that was somehow on both sides of this border, and at that moment, he knew that there must be a way to cross this border, as how else would this village have been built? And so this Steve clone ran to it to get a closer look, but at closer examination, it became clear that this village had been abandoned for quite some time. But before the Steve could figure out why, the world began to shake, and so the Steve ran into the closest house he could see, fearing that there was an earthquake. But as he stood there in the corner of that house, he looked out the window, and there he saw it. A giant villager holding a giant emerald, and it was on the other side of the border. And so the Steve just stood there and stared as it crossed the border, and how the emerald he was holding started to glow, almost as if it had been enchanted. It was just so fascinating for the Steve to see. And so at that moment, the Steve decided to run out of this house and chase his villager down, to talk to him about why he was so big and how he crossed the border. However, even whilst running, he just couldn't catch up with that villager, as it was just going too fast. But he wasn't left with nothing from that experience as a small chip from that giant enchanted emerald had fallen off and landed in the ground. And at first, the Steve didn't even notice this, but very quickly, he heard it, and it was almost as if it was calling out to him. And so, he ran over to it, and touched it. And at that moment, everything changed. Immediately, the emerald started to infuse itself into him, and he started to glow. And then suddenly, he had visions of what looked like a time tens of thousands of years ago. There were these ancient villagers, and they were crossing this wall with ease. 
And every time they went through this wall, they gained magical powers, such as becoming a giant, like the villager he just saw. He wanted to know more from this vision, but then he suddenly snapped back to reality. He understood it now. That wall gave powers, and that's why the emerald glowed when it passed through it, and that's why the villager was a giant. But now, as he had that emerald inside of him, was he going to gain powers? Surely he would. And on the surface, it looked like he had gained powers, as he had turned into this emerald looking green Steve, but deep down, he didn't actually gain any actual powers. But just as all hope seemed lost for this Steve, the emerald inside of him spoke. The Desert Pyramid is where you must go to unlock your powers. The green Steve just stood there, confused at what just happened. First an emerald had absorbed into him, and now it can talk to him? It was just so strange. But regardless of all these oddities, he knew he wanted to get those powers. And so he decided to do as the emerald said, and he started looking for a desert temple. And he was looking around for several days, all whilst boiling in the midday sun. But he had no luck. Until eventually, after several days, he finally found a temple, and he walked in. But just as he was walking in, the emerald spoke to him again. Hide now, he's coming. Powers shall come later. Who's coming? thought the Steve, and why can't he have his powers now? But again, he just followed through with the emerald's request, and he dug down in the desert temple and hid. But while he was hiding, the world began to shake again. But this time the shaking felt a bit different, not quite like that villager. And so the Steve wanted to find out what was causing the shaking. And so he tried to dig back out. But the emerald stopped him. No. And then the emerald summoned an endless pit all around him, thus trapping him. The Steve understood at that moment that the emerald was the master in this relationship, and also the fact that he was going to have to stay still until the shaking had stopped, just like the emerald had wanted. And once it had stopped, the emerald spoke again. Now you may leave. And so the pit was filled back in, and they left their small hideout. But then the emerald spoke again. We are now one, and this temple is now our home. And so if you want to gain your powers, you must first bring more of me to our home. Now at first the Steve didn't quite understand what he was meant to do, but he assumed that that just meant he had to gather more emeralds and bring them back to this desert temple. And so he left the temple and went to climb a nearby mountain. And after spending a few hours looking, he was able to find his very first emerald ore. And so he mined it. And at that moment, he gained his very first power, X-Ray Vision. The emerald talked again. This is power one of three. The more emeralds you mine and return home, the more powers you shall unlock. The Steve stood there for a moment, thinking of what other powers he could get. And then he faced downwards at the ground, and he saw everything. All the ores, all the lava pits, everything. And it was all because of the X-ray vision. And so he started mining. And over those next few days, he found hundreds of emeralds. And so he returned them back to the pyramid. And then he repeated that cycle over and over and over, collecting more and more emeralds. And while to begin with, it was all very boring, just mining emeralds all day and night, very quickly, this green Steve became obsessed with emeralds, as he loved the way that they just glistened in the sun. It was so magical for him to see, which just meant he became even more motivated to find even more emeralds, and hopefully, very soon, he could gain those other powers. But after a few years, once he had collected at this point hundreds of thousands of emeralds, the emerald inside of him still hadn't spoken to announce his other powers. But then, one day, when he was placing down another few hundred emeralds, the emerald inside of him spoke again. This is power two of three, emerald warping. Emerald warping? What was that thought the green Steve? But as he went to sit down on one of the many emerald blocks to think about it, it became very clear what it was. As he was able to absorb himself into the emeralds, 
and teleport to any other emeralds within any distance. This was going to make emerald mining very easy. And so, by using his two powers, by the end of that year, he was able to collect millions of emeralds. And other than a few accidental encounters with some other Steve clones, of which he ran in fear on all four occasions, as he did not want the other Steve to see the grand emerald powers that he had obtained. But other than those slight minor mishaps, his emerald collection business was booming, as he was nearing almost 10 million emeralds collected now. And so, once he reached that milestone, the emerald, who hadn't spoken to him for years, finally spoke again. This is power three of three. You will now become as powerful and sturdy as all of the emeralds that you have collected combined. Use this strength wisely. As soon as the emerald said that, the green Steve started to glow again. He realized at this moment that he had become the most powerful Steve clone of them all. Now, at first, it may have seemed like the Steve was going to use his powers for evil. As why else would he have hid from the other clones? And why else would he have spent decades of his life dedicated to gaining those powers? There must have been a more sinister motive. But in reality, he actually had plans that once he'd gained all these powers from the Emerald, that he would return home and that he would help the villagers. As that was why he had originally left all those decades ago. But before he could do that, the world began to shake, just like it had all those years ago when he was forced to hide. But today was going to be different. With the power of the Emerald Strength, he believed that he could fight whatever being that was causing this shaking. And so he walked to the surface, and there it was. The Minecraft spirit, the creator of this world. It spoke. You are not worthy of those powers. You stole them. He lifted up his hand and telekinetically moved the green Steve up into the air. And now your soul and your powers shall be returned to me. He was stuck in place. Even with all these powers, he was helpless. And so he closed his eyes, bracing for the attack. But after a few seconds, he wasn't dead. He opened his eyes. Emeralds, thousands of them, had floated from his pyramid and were now all forming a shield around him, protecting him. But this god was breaking through. It wasn't enough. And then, at that moment, the emerald inside of him spoke again for the first time in a number of years. Listen, he wants you. I don't have the time to explain it, but you must do as I say, as he will stop at nothing to destroy you. And if that means that the world will suffer, he will make it suffer. And so to stop that, I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to convert all of your powers into speed. It will only be temporary, but I need you to run as far as you can and tell every villager and every Steve that they need to prepare and you need to warn them of the border powers. The Steve wanted to know more and why this spirit wanted him, but he also didn't want the world to suffer because of his greed for more knowledge. And so he started running, ready to tell everyone everything. But as he was running, the spirit was now breaking through the Emerald Shield and he had began his hunt for the Green Steve. And so to find out what happens next, you'll need to watch this video.